and welcome to AWE 2022. It's a pleasure to see everyone in person, and for those of you online, welcome as well. Now, you may have noticed in the description, I'm here to do something that I think is potentially dangerous. I intend to specifically define the term metaverse. Now, I'm sure this is going to cause a number of critics to step, step up and criticize. Still, I really do think we need a definition for a word and, and what it means in 22, given all the hoopla, all the science fiction, the fact that the tech industry has come forward and made it the next billion and trillion dollar bet, all in just the last year or so. But still it amazes me that a full year later, as this made the headlines, we're still arguing about what it actually means and if it actually means anything. So Meta's president of global affairs wrote an 8,000 word essay. According to the medium, it takes 33 minutes to read. We've only got 25, so I'm gonna shorten it here. What he said was the metaverse is a universal virtual layer that everyone can experience on top of today's physical world. Dolby CEO said, I think the metaverse can take many forms, but ultimately it's an audiovisual experience. Match's CEO said that the metaverse is a piano bar where people's digital selves are gathering around, but they're actually playing their pianos at home and jamming with others. And then Bill Gates theorized, I predict most meetings will move from 2D camera image grids, which I call the Hollywood Squares model, to the metaverse, a 3D space with digital avatars. Now there's many other definitions in that, these are a few, um, but then you might ask yourself, why should you listen to my definition? Well, I've had a bit of a ringside seat to what is now being described as the metaverse. I spent the last 25 years of my life working in gaming, launching many games that people today would describe as metaverse experiences. I now work at Unity, where over half the world's games are built on our platform, and possibly more importantly, 60% of all AR and VR experiences are built on the Unity platform. And I was deeply involved with Brendan and Palmer when they launched Oculus. Uh, Brendan even edited his Andreessen pitch in my kitchen just prior to that uh, first pitch, and before he ended up selling the business to, to Facebook slash Meta. So much of what Unity does today is meets the definition of the metaverse. Hundreds of companies come to us every quarter to get their taste of the metaverse, to build what they wanna see. Our digital twins business today powers full rep replications of products, manufacturing hubs, smart cities for the likes of Mercedes, eBay, Walgreens, Orlando, airports like Vancouver, enabling them to design and collaborate better, visualize their data better, and make better decisions. So in this world of metaverses, there may be no clear definition, but at least I've got some credentials to suggest that maybe my definition might be worth listening to. So here we go, the definition. The metaverse is the next generation of the internet that is always real time, mostly 3D, mostly interactive, mostly social, and mostly persistent. All right, that's a lot to take in. Let's put those words on the screen and talk about it a bit. So here you go, the next generation of the internet, always real time, mostly 3D, mostly interactive, mostly social and mostly persistent. Now keep those words in mind as I go further to define what it means, but let's start with internet next. When you think of the internet, um, the way it's structured today, it's millions of destinations and websites with data being presented to you. Sometimes it's social, there's a limited amount of interactivity, it's not generally 3D, and it's definitely not uh, real time in any sense of the word. And that notion of presence is definitely not achieved. So when I say the metaverse is the next version of the internet, what I mean is step by step, we'll see more websites and experiences and applications that are increasingly real-time 3D, they're interactive social, and they achieve persistence. Today, maybe 2% or so of the websites meet this definition. I'm gonna pause for a bold prediction and say that soon, probably by the end of this decade, most websites will meet this definition and millions of more metaverse destinations will entertain and help us be more productive and feel that much more smart. So critics, uh, something to quibble with. I'm stating plainly here that the metaverse will be the next version of the internet 
where destinations are real-time, 3D, interactive, social, and persistent. Facebook and Reddit friends, uh, something to fight about. Now, I'd also like to catch everybody up on what I mean when I say real-time. Now, real-time might be, might be a term that you're not all familiar with. I, I imagine many of you are. So we all live in real time. No one knows for sure what's going to happen next. It depends on what you do. It depends on what happens around you. A movie, for example, is not real time. It's the same each and every time you watch it. Real time is a term used often in video gaming by the artists there, where the next frame is seen for the first time based on whether you press X or O or triangle or square or whether you or your competitor on a, on a smartphone game touch the screen, how you touched it, when you touched it, what you intended. Um, most content today is not real time. Um, most games are and many digital twins experiences are. And what I get to see is every day there's new real time applications coming out. Now, before I go further, um, let's talk about I met this amazing author, Neil Stevenson, who coined the term metaverse back in 1992. He wrote the book Snow, Snow Crash. Now, I think he got an awful lot right, but I also think he got some things wrong. But just a quick refresher. The protagonist of Snow Crash was aptly named Hero Protagonist. Hero lived in what was intrinsically linking the real world to the digital world. One could say he lived a dual life. In the physical world, he delivered pizza and lived in a trucking container. In the digital world, which he experienced through his always-on AR glasses, um, he was an important player. He was powerful. He was respected. The book showed how these two worlds were both real to Hero and how they intersected. So let me start a little bit with what Neil Stevenson got right. Now, the metaverse will have destinations that feel real, a sense of being there, a sense of presence. And here, uh, I think there's another word worth defining. You hear the word presence a lot. Now, presence is that feeling that being in another space and being in a digital world. Um, in most of today's internet, when I go buy a book, for example, I don't feel like I've gone someplace else. The data has come to me. When I buy a tennis racket online, I don't think I'm there. I think it's coming into my computer. Now, the first time I experienced the pre-launch Oculus headset, they had me stand up and walk to the edge of a cliff. And I stepped off of it. Now, I won't do that here, but I fell down in fear. I felt like I really did step off into oblivion. Now, that's presence. I felt I was there. I felt I was on a cliff edge. But you ask ourselves, where do we experience that incredible combination of great hardware and software artistry, that sense of presence, that sense of immersion? Now, MMO games are certainly an immersing experience. They get very close. And when they're really good, my imagination does take me the rest of the way. I feel like there's a sense of presence. Multiple AR and VR applications also provide that sense of presence, where the, I'm really thinking, you know, feeling that I'm someplace else. Presence in a present in an alternative world. Now, there's many good examples to think about today. You know, an early one is World of Warcraft. It presented players with a believable world, one where we literally feel we're living in it through the battles and the friendships, new relationships, life and death. Guilds are like second families. New relationships spawn. Veteran players help one another. It's 3D, it's real time, it's persistent, and it's very social. Now, Roblox is another example. Um, it's 3D, it's real time, it's interactive, it's persistent. And it happens to be the most popular game in the United States with people 5 to 12 years of age. And it was a lifeline for children during the pandemic. It gave children this immersive, predictable world in which they can meet friends. Pokemon Go is another example. People talk about it endlessly. Players join and, uh, to take down Pokemon in what appear to be local gyms. They send gifts to far-flung Poke friends. And Reddit, subreddits boast a channel of 700,000 members. The game is real time. It's 3D. It's interactive. But I'd argue it's not fundamentally social or persistent. And while it does stitch together a real world, the digital presence in a brilliant way, I don't think it delivers on that sense of presence. You know where you are. Now, VR Chat, another one, is a top 10 gaming and chat platform. But unlike other games topping the charts, almost all of the content in VR Chat is created by the user community, not a professional studio or publisher. 
I think this is a great example of real-time 3D social interactive platform that really does deliver that sense of presence. Now, these, are, uh, these examples, they follow the definition of real-time immersive 3D persistence that we talk about at Unity. And I think you might see why I describe these experiences distinct from today's internet or most of today's internet. You know, one might argue that the internet's progressed from digital or, if you will, text to photos to video. And I think we're really at the start of that next generation of the internet. And that is, back to the definition, always real time. It's mostly 3D. It's mostly interactive. It's mostly social. And it's mostly persistent. And of all the components, I really think real time is the most important. The media is alive because the next event we experience is not predestined, but rather spontaneously arises out of the actions and the actions of those around you. The media is alive. Now, there's an order of magnitude of steps ahead to experience what today's internet will need to transform to. And this is where Snow Crash got a lot of things right. There are key aspects of Snow Crash that, at least in my opinion, are very right, and some where I think they fell short. Now, first off, let's start with where they got things wrong. Snow Crash presented a singular world, um, a universal world. Everything was inside it, much the same as Ready Player One. And I can see why this is an appealing concept, but I just don't think it's right. Now, Travis Scott performed in Fortnite. I don't think he's going to do all of his concerts in Fortnite. Um, I don't see Netflix you know, opening up a destiny inside of Disney's version of the metaverse. I don't see eBay opening up inside of Amazon. Nor do I see the benefit for the video game, for example, of FIFA or Call of Duty opening up inside of Roblox. My sense is that in time, there will be separate destinations inside the metaverse, and we'll bop from these one to another easily, instantly, much as we traverse multiple websites on the internet today. Now, I think it might even be more easy or faster as more of the underlying infrastructure and plumbing will be smarter, more interoperable, and more seamless. So another piece of my metaverse destination. The metaverse is not and never will be a single destination. Um, Oh, we went backwards on our slides here. Um, we've, sorry about that. Um, we've learned a lot since Snow Crash and Ready Player One. And one thing we've learned, I think, is the metaverse, as I said, won't be a love repetition. So what else did these authors get wrong? Um, I'm, I'm sorry, we've got to go, go. Um, what else did they get wrong? Um, here's another idea being promoted by some of the most important companies in the world. It's about avatars. Now. There's a lot of folks talking about and promoting the notion that avatars, a universal singular avatar, will represent you throughout the, throughout the metaverse. I don't think this is right. I think it's simply wrong. I can see the need for avatars for digital try-on. I'm sure most of us will have avatars whose bodies are millimeter accurate to our own, copies of our bodies, so we can do try-ons of pants and shirts and jackets. Um, I think it'll be really useful for a boutique, my favorite clothing brand conveniently in my living room. But I'm not going to go um, this avatar battle. I'm not going to take the same avatar I tried clothes on and take it into Call of Duty or into a UFC game. There, I'm going to be taller. I'll be more muscular. I might actually get to be handsome. Um, these types of things in a different world are more important. It won't be that same universal avatar. And I won't need that universal avatar if I'm doing a digital twin in my kitchen or my office or checking out whether I like the look of new furniture in my living room. Having an avatar here to decide whether I'm going to, say, a Lake Como or a Positano, it'll get in the way. It'll slow things down. It'll add no value. So the last thing I think these science fiction writers got wrong was presenting the metaverse as ex being experienced exclusively through an XR headset. Now, to be clear, I think there'll be many great experiences in the metaverse through XR. But they will also access, the, access these experiences through smartphones, TVs, game consoles, and tablets. Um, we all have our hardware preferences today on the internet. And we'll have these same preferences. Maybe they'll change depending on the experience. But we're going to bring those with us. We, we're going to expect to be able to access the metaverse from whatever device we're using. Um, that's proven out with games like Fortnite and, and Roblox and Rec Room and many others. And so I'm sort of done telling you what the metaverse is not. 
Let's go back a little bit to what it is. As I said before, it's the next step in the internet that's always real time. It's almost mostly 3D, mostly interactive, mostly social, mostly persistent. And over time, I think we'll see breathtaking experiences that are very different from what the internet is today. Now, these experiences, these many definitions, um, these many destinations will count to the millions. In my view, virtually everyone that's got a website today, um, by the year 2030, will have a metaverse destination. And taken together, I think all of these individual destinations will make up what I think of as a metaverse. They'll have an increasing sense of presence for the user. We'll feel transported to another place and another reality. And there's one more definition to consider. I think there'll be three broad categories of metaverse destinations. Um, one will be 100% digital, like a Fortnite or a Roblox or VR chat. Um, they'll be very social. We'll see education metaverses of this type. They won't have a strong intersection with real life. There will be 100% digital experiences, places we'll go, places we'll experience the world with no real world parallel. Second, we're going to see applications that connect real life with the digital, or better known as digital twins. It could be me trying on a, a, a Gucci shirt to see if it fits, or I, you know, I could be walking in a yet-to-be-built stadium if my seats have a good view, or enabling a manufacturing supervisor to operate that manufacturing facility from, from the comfort of her home, or a twin of an airport. These destinations, these destinations will bridge the real world to the digital world. And third, I think there'll be metaverse applications that don't so much bridge the digital world to the real world. They're going to augment the real world. Um, much of what we see today in training, um, you know, example of building things, JPL used Unity to visualize the build of the Marge rover. Uh, Peterbilt uses it for um, building out the trucks and their design. Volkswagen uses us for training thousands of their technicians on the assembly line, again, by augmented reality. This is that augmentation. So the definition remains always real time. Real time is foundational to metaverse destinations. The next frame is seen for the first and often the only time in history based on your thumbs, your, 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 your fingers, your eyes, your gestures. And the world would be the most dynamic possible for you. And this is what we consider when presence is achieved. Now, mostly 3D, 3D is another key part of achieving that sense of presence. It's also essential in games and architecture, um, most engineering, so in nearly all digital twins. Now, 3D won't help us select a book, and I'm sure we'll want it for designing our kitchens or seeing how we look in a new outfit. Now, and while the information will be consumed in 2D, on a 2D screen, 3D can change how we digest information and makes activities like learning about the human body more immersive and more interactive. For most situations, 3D is better. Now, interactive. All that real-time content can be, can be driven by you alone, but it isn't just as interesting when there's more, it's more interesting when there's someone else there, someone else that's helping driving part of the equation. Whether you're using digital twins to operate a big factory or working collaboratively to design a house, doing so together interactively is often better. Social connectivity. Let's go back to that virtual try-on. You can try on that suit or dress or jacket with your friends in the room advising you, just like real life, except you won't have to fight for parking. And mostly persistent. Whether you're playing a game, you knock down a wall, it stays knocked down. You have a digital twin of a manufacturing facility. The wear and tear on the parts is real. It's visible. You can understand it and act on it. And that note you left in a digital room for your very real world partner, that note will be there when he or she comes to find it when they get home. So there you have it, a definition of the word metaverse, the next version of the internet, always real time, and mostly 3D, interactive, social, and persistent. Now, for me at least, this definition lets me imagine tomorrow and to predict a few things. First, as I said, there'll be many millions of metaverse destinations. Most entities will have websites and soon will have metaverse destinations counting into the millions. Second, there are some obvious killer apps that will thrive in the metaverse. One will be a contextual app launcher. You'll walk down the street with your family in the evening. 
you have your AR glasses on, you look at a restaurant. Because it's evening and you're with your family, um, you might look at that restaurant, it'll tell you what's on the menu, might remind you you've been there before, whether there's an open table. The next day, you're an architect. You're walking down that same street. You glance at the same building, but because it's contextually where this new launcher will open a different application, understanding who and where you are. And it'll tell you about the architect, the builder, when it was built, and any particular design interest points that you need to understand. That, that, that's a contextual and connected. Um, it's the combination of the best deal digital world using real-time 3D that is interactive, persistent, and that remains connected to others socially interacting with the physical world. Now, through all of um, what we showed you today, my hope is you see a metaverse becoming more than a singular place um, visited by your universal avatar, accessed by a universal VR headset. It is so much more. From the original internet that was entirely text-based and the 2D-based photo and video-centric internet we are experiencing today, we're on the threshold of something huge, real-time interactive internet driven by compelling 3D content that is largely persistent social and interactive. The reality of a metaverse today is a world beyond the science fiction of the 1990s. So whether you're an architect or a small retailer, a clothing designer, or you direct movies, whether you move furniture, run physical stadiums, you lead a rock band, or make high-end luxury goods, it's time to think deeply about the coming metaverse and how you'll succeed in this new world. I hope that this talk and this definition of the metaverse can be a call of imagination to inspire you to build the next era of the internet through real-time 3D. So think on it. What will your killer app be? So just maybe we at Unity might be able to help. If you're looking to learn more about what we're up to at Unity, we have a QR code up here. Snap it and enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Thank you.